Today, Rockzilla and I are going to show you the lead scale pattern that you need to unleash your fretboard. It's not only simple, it's movable. How many times have you been trying to create a lead solo or a fill in between chords and you think to yourself, man, I just play scales and they sound boring. Don't you wish you had a way to tie the fretboard together? Yeah, I got the trick for you, man. I always have a blast making these videos and sharing them with you guys. I love the comments and feedback. It's great. So if you enjoy this kind of content about guitars, techniques, skills, gear, just geek stuff, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. LCS, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Let's break the pattern down and show you how simple it is, okay? It involves mostly the first and third fingers. And just about every time you're skipping one fret in between. It couldn't be simpler. All right, now take the first finger. We'll go to the next two frets up to the fifth fret, and then we'll slide that to the seventh fret. Right? Now we're gonna do the same kind of thing right here. We're gonna go first finger on the fifth string. That's on the seventh fret. And we'll go over here to the fifth fret on the fourth string. So if you know your guitar notes on this fretboard, this is a lower G, this is a little bit higher. It's an octave higher. Same note, so watch this. Nice, huh? Now watch this. All we do is we take this bad boy, he starts on a little trip, and he goes, here I am on the root again. Take this, slide it up, same thing, one and three, first finger, third finger. Your last note we're gonna stop right now is the next string over, which is the second string. That is your root again. So let me play it for you and you'll see how simple it is. Hear how it's the same pattern in a row, just a little further up the neck. Nice, right? It sounds a lot better than Right? Now, if you want to, we can go a little higher. If you want to see that part, stick around. I'll show that at the end of the video. But for now, let's review what we already know. You can start this just about anywhere. Now, you don't want to start it way up here at the like 15th, 17th, 18th fret, okay? But you let's say you're playing in the key of G. Playing a nice major G chord. You can go, hey man, watch this, bro. See that? You can do it backwards. Now watch, you do it faster and it sounds like you're a rock star. Check it out, man. It's a simple pattern. Work on it. Take it slowly. Do it uh, several times in the same position. Work on the G position several times until it feels so comfortable. You just go. But then say to yourself, hmm, how about some variety? Move it up. You can move it up one fret, two fret, three, whatever you want. Just for now, let's move it up to the fifth fret. that we end on an A right there. This is an A, this is an A, this is an A. All right, here's a little bonus for you. Any of you Led Zeppelin fans, you know the song Dancing Days? There's a super sweet lead in Dancing Days. It uses this similar pattern, very similar, not exactly. Just for fun, I want to show you what he does to get from the low C. Now he starts on the fifth string. It's a little different, but he starts in the fifth string on this C note to get up to a very high C up here. Hang on, I'll show you how you do that. This is sort of a bonus. You don't have to watch this part. 
I just want to show you how cool that even someone like Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin uses patterns that are easy and repeatable and movable. So when he's playing the song Dancing Days, it's such a cool tune. It goes. Right? And then he launches into that really sweet soaring solo and it goes like this. All he's doing is very similar to what we already know. Right? One, three, right up two. Now he skips up a little further. He goes into a C bar chord, but a small version. If you know how to play an F chord down here, move it up to the eighth fret, and it's a C. So all he does is walk his way up to the C. That's your bonus. Now here's that extra part I told you. If you want to take the lead part a little further up the fretboard, instead of just ending right here on the C or the G, sorry, instead of go, you want to go a little further. It's a little trickier, but not too bad. It's almost exactly the same, except remember we're on the middle finger here. It's kind of odd the way the strings are set up, but that's how it works. Right? Now we slide do the same thing from here. Right? Now, we're at that G. We can keep the middle finger there. It's a little tricky. You can take your middle finger. Take your third if you want. Or you can, if you want to switch over the first finger, it's easier. Get the fret. Right up two. Right? Now do the same thing. You have to skip a little higher here. Use your pinky and you end up on the G way up at the top, man. So here you are. You got up to here. You want to go a little further? I usually keep my middle finger in place, but let's just move it to the first finger. Same pattern. One, three, slide. One, three, up to the, the uh, 12, 13, 14, 15th, 12, 13, 14, 15th fret. G. You want, might want to use your pinky on that. So here it is. Bottom to top. That was your extra credit work. I hope you enjoyed this simple little lead pattern. I use it all the time. Let me just tell you, you don't have to do the exact same way every time. You could mess around and go. If you want, funk it up a little bit. Or mess it up like I did. All right, man. That was too much fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.